Joining me now to talk more about it is Democratic Senator from Massachusetts, Ed Markey. He is also a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, which will hold the confirmation hearing for whoever the president nominates to replace Nikki Haley. Senator, it's great to see you. Thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. I want to start by, by showing a little bit uh, of what you had to say during the confirmation uh, hearing for Nikki Haley, the, the issues you focused on then. Take a look, then we'll talk about it. You will see me, if confirmed, all over the UN, making sure that they understand the importance of alliances and allies and working together where we can. So standing here today, Senator, do you believe that Nikki Haley has followed through on that? And how do you assess overall her tenure as U.N. ambassador? Well, I respect Nikki Haley's service at the um, United Nations. Um, she's deeply committed to public service. But uh, I disagree with the issues that she has been advancing there at the uh, United Nations. And just last week or two weeks ago at the United Nations, when President Trump appeared before them, he said that his administration had accomplished more than any American administration in history, and the entire United Nations General Assembly laughed at Donald Trump. And so it's pretty clear that whether it's climate change, uh, which this just yesterday the United Nations issued an incredible warning about how dangerous that is and how much more we have to do, his Iran uh, policy, uh, his policy uh, in Burma on the Rohingya, or his continued assertion uh, that he's had success in North Korea when, in fact, uh, there has been no dismantlement of any ballistic missiles or any uh, nuclear weapons thus far, um, that this administration does not have a very good record uh, in building alliances, in working together with, with the rest of the world, and it resulted in the United Nations General Assembly unbelievably laughing at the President of the United States. Whoever is going to be the next uh, person in line to replace Nikki Haley is going to, of course, have to come uh, before your committee, before the Senate. Uh, there's been some speculation that the president uh, might consider naming his daughter, Ivanka Trump, uh, to this role. I'm wondering, do you think that Ivanka Trump would be qualified to be the U.S. ambassador to the U.N.? Well, I don't think I should engage in speculation about who might be the next nominee to be our U.N. ambassador. I will say this, though. Whoever is nominated will be receiving extremely close, close scrutiny of their credentials, uh, of their credibility, of their background, of their ability to do this job. Uh, and that's going to be something that I think members on both sides of the aisle are going to take very seriously during these perilous times. So I don't think it's going to be one nominee or another, every nominee, whoever it may be. Uh, is, going to relo is going to actually receive the same level of scrutiny. So you don't necessarily think that somebody whose main credentials are in the business world, perhaps working for her father's company, might uh, be qualified to serve in the role? Um, uh, just getting beyond the issue of the, the family relationship, uh, I think that we would have to have a full exploration of all of her views on all foreign policy issues, which we do not know right now. Uh, but mm. that, again, is going to be true uh, of anyone who comes before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. We're going to probe very, very deeply. Mm. Let's switch uh, and talk a little bit about uh, now Justice Kavanaugh, who had his first uh, day on the bench uh, questioning uh, the uh, plaintiffs at the Supreme Court, litigants at the Supreme Court. Um, what is your view on the impact that this fight has had on the midterm elections going forward? Do you think this is going to have the effect of, of damaging Democrats' chances of potentially taking back the Senate? No, I think it's just the opposite. Um, we just lost. Um, women against uh, across this country saw uh, a truncated process in the United States uh, Senate in terms of conducting a full investigation of the allegations of Dr. Blasey Ford. They heard the president uh, make a, a joke about Dr. Blasey Ford, calling all of her allegations a hoax. So I think what is about to happen is that everyone, but especially, particularly women in this country, are now ready to mobilize, to be galvanized. And I think we're about to see 
uh, an election that becomes a referendum, not just on Donald Trump, but also on his successful nomination, pushing Brett Kavanaugh through the Supreme, uh, to the Supreme Court, where he'll have the deciding vote on Roe versus Wade. He'll have the deciding vote on pre-existing conditions. He'll have the uh, deciding vote on whether or not there's full coverage for opioid and mental health coverage in this country, and issue after issue, we lost. Democrats lost, and there's nothing more motivating than a loss to get you out there and working. Their side won. They know it was not legitimately won, but our side knows that this seat has been stolen uh, from uh, the uh, American people, and it is going to be a motivating force that is going to get people up, activated, not agonizing, but organizing in order to make this a change election in America. All right. Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Great Thank you. Great You're welcome. You.